So today we're going to cover section five. We're going to learn two more ratios. We're going to learn the sine and the cosine ratios today. So we have a total of three. So we're going to cover sine, cosine, and then on Friday we had covered the tangent ratio. So let's go ahead and see what the sine and the cosine ratio, how we form fractions. Always remember, we're only doing this trig with right triangles. So we're going to let ABC be a right triangle, and it's going to have an acute angle at angle A and at one at B. So whenever we're asked to find sine, cosine, or tangent, it will never be on that right angle. It will always only be on the acute angles. So the ratio of the side lengths when we do sine, we're going to do the length of the leg opposite over the length of the hypotenuse. When we do cosine, we're going to use the length of the leg adjacent to the length of the leg, uh, the length of the hypotenuse. So notice here, we have to switch the, the names of the sides based on the acute angle they're asking us to, to use. So for example, if I'm talking about angle A, then when I go to give my three sides their names, always give the hypotenuse first, it's always across from the right angle, and then the side that's across from angle A, little a is opposite, and little b will be adjacent. Now when they ask me to switch the problem and then give the names for the sides based on angle B, then now the side across from B, little b becomes opposite and little a becomes adjacent. Hypotenuse is always going to stay the side that's across from the 90 degrees. Let's learn an acronym to help us remember these three ratios. So normally, this is not an open note test when everyone is in person in school, but this is a nice little acronym to help you remember which sides to put in the ratios. So this is called SOKATOA. So the SO is for sine, so the S is sine, and then the O is for opposite, and the H is for hypotenuse. So the sine uses the so part of the saying. The cosine is going to use the ka. So this is going to represent the a and ka represents adjacent. And the h again represents hypotenuse. So that's for the ka. And then the last one, the toa. The T is for tan, the O is for opposite, and the H is for adjacent. So it's a little acronym to help you remember the sides that you put into the ratio. So it's just an acronym to help you. Let's try to figure out what sine, cosine, and tangent, and for each of the acute angles. So I'm gonna give you an example. This time we're gonna have numbers on the sides of our triangle. So here is a right triangle. Remember, again, all of these trig uh, functions need to be only used for right triangles, and we only do it for the acute angles. So now it wants me to do the sine, cosine, and tangent for angle A, and then again repeat it, but then do it for angle B. So the first thing I'm gonna do is do the sine, cosine, and tangent for angle A. Let me go ahead and add in my names for each of the sides. Remember the side across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. The side that's across from the angle we're talking about is the opposite. And then the one that's right next to it is the adjacent. So now we're going to go ahead and fill them in. So sine of A, remember we could use our SO acronym. So we're going to do the side opposite over the hypotenuse. 
Then for cosine of A, we can use our C acronym. So we're gonna do the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now, if it asked to also give the decimal rep representation for this, you would divide three by five and it's 0.6. Four by five, 0.8. If it says to give three decimal places or four, these would have zeros in it and Canvas would cut it off so you could just leave it just like this. And then for TOA, that's the tangent. That is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is three-fourths, which is 0.75. Now I need to go back and rename the sides, but now using angle B. So if I go back now and now give the names based off of angle B, this side now becomes opposite. This one is now the adjacent, but the hypotenuse stays the hypotenuse. So let's do repeat the process. So now we're gonna do it for sine of B though. So the sine of B, again, opposite over hypotenuse, four over five. Cosine of B, adjacent over hypotenuse, three over five. And then lastly, tangent, opposite over adjacent, four over three. Pretty good. So this would have been, again, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 1.3 repeating, or just 1.3 if we round to the tenths. Actually, it'll say four decimal places, so we'll put in four threes. Now, notice the relationship here. Notice the answer for sine of A. It's the same as the answer for cosine of B. And then the cosine of A is the same as the sine of B. And that's gonna lead us in to the next slide where they talk about the sine and cosine of complementary angles. So in your homework tonight, they're gonna ask you to rewrite, for example, the sine of 30 degrees in terms of cosine. So if you notice here that the sine of A is equal to the cosine where you take 90 degrees and you subtract angle A's measure, and that will give you the cosine for the other acute angle. So here, 30 could be A, and then the other acute angle would be 60, so then you would just do 90 minus 30 and get 60. So rewriting this in terms of cosine, you just subtract from 90 and these two are equivalent. So the sine of 30 is the same as the cosine of 60. So that's all this slide is saying. And when we do it later on, we're gonna actually do the sine of 30 and the cosine of 60, and these both simplify to one half, or they're both equal to one half, and we're gonna see that coming up. But they both give us the same answer. If you have your calculator, go ahead and take it out. Again, you really should be practicing with the calculator you're gonna use for the test next week. So for the first part, when it gives you uh, one of the trig functions and an angle measure, all you do is either some calculators you hit sine and then 30, some calculators you have to do 30 and then hit the sine button. Once we do this, you're gonna see that the sine of 30 is one half or 0.5. If it says to round in the instructions here, I want you to round to four decimal places. So it would really be this. However, 
if Canvas is looking for a numeric answer, it will chop off these zeros automatic. Just remember that 0 0.5 is equivalent to 0 0.5000. For the cosine of 42, you touch that cosine button and then 42 or vice versa, depending on your calculator, and you should be getting 0 0.7431. Now, when you're looking for, notice here, they had already put the angle. When you're looking for the angle, so when you're looking for the angle measure, this is where we're gonna use inverse. We did it with tan on Friday. Now we're gonna do the same thing with sine and cosine. So when you're looking for the angle measure, we're either gonna use the shift key or the second key. Whatever button's gonna get you to open up the menu where you're gonna have sine to the negative one. So we're gonna be, for part C, we're gonna do sine to the negative one power, then put in the decimal that's there, hit enter, 5.9984. We're gonna round these to the nearest degree, so six degrees. So for C and D, nearest degree. Miss Corey? Yes. May you move to the left to see what you wrote on the side? There you go. And then for the next one, again, we're looking for an angle, cosine negative one, put in the decimal, hit enter, 15.0057, rounded round it to the nearest degree, 15 degrees. So remember also that your calculator must be in degrees. One way that you can always remember to check to see if it is correct, just type in tangent 45, it should give you one. If it gives you a crazy decimal, then you know you're not in degrees. Now here, it wants us to find the values of x and y to the nearest integer. So we're gonna to round to the whole number, or in this case, an integer. Um, so what we need to do here is we're gonna do things one at a time. You're either gonna first find x or find y. It doesn't matter which one you find first. You're gonna look at your given information. You have to decide which of the three trig functions we just learned will help us to find x and which one will help us to find y. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to label my sides based off of the acute angle that's given to me. So I'm gonna label in relation to the 28 degrees. The x is the side that is opposite to 28 the thousand is the hypotenuse, and the y is the adjacent. Now, when you did the homework on Friday, it was easy because you only knew one trig function. Now we have all three. So now let's go ahead and do x first. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, identify where x is located. It's the opposite. And then I'm also gonna go back and figure out which side has given numbers to me, which is the hypotenuse. Which trig ratio uses opposite and hypotenuse? I'm going to be using sine, because remember, the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The theta is a Greek symbol that holds the place for an angle. In this case, I know the angle measure, it's 28. I don't know the opposite, that is my variable x. And my hypotenuse is 1000. I'm now going to solve this equation for x by multiplying both sides by 1000. It will cancel out of the denominator and now I'm left just multiplying 1,000 times the sine of 28. Once I do this, 
So once I multiply 1,000 times the sine of 28, I get 469.47 equals x. I'm rounding to the nearest degree. The 4 tells me that the 669 stays the same. So x is equal to 469. These are not degrees. It is a side length. Now, I could go back now and to find y, technically I could do tangent to find it. Or I could even do Pythagorean theorem. But the problem with that is what if I made a mistake in calculating x? Then for sure my y is wrong. So this is why I'm always going to go back to only the information that's given. So for to find y, I'm going to be using adjacent and hypotenuse. And for this one, I'm going to use cosine. So I'm going to be doing the cosine. Maybe I'll do it down here so it shows up a little better. I'm going to do the cosine of 28 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. My adjacent is the y, and my hypotenuse is the 1,000. I'm going to multiply both sides by 1,000. Cancels. 1,000 times the cosine of 28 gives me y is equal to 882.9. I'm rounding to the nearest integer, so 883. And that will be what y equals. Remember, you can go back and you could do Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared to make sure that your numbers match up. Now, it may be slightly off because, again, remember, these are rounded answers. So this time, they only want us to find one variable, and it's actually an angle measure. So this is where I'm going to use my inverse to find a degree or an angle measure. We're going to round our answer to the nearest degree. So I'm going to go ahead and identify my sides based off of angle x, or the x variable. So the 18 is the opposite to x. The 30 is the hypotenuse. It's across from the right angle. I need to think about which trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse. And again, that is sine. So I'm going to do sine of x degrees is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to be doing sine to the negative 1 of 18 over 30. Hit enter. You're going to get x is equal to 36.8 rounded to the nearest degree. Angle, the measure of angle x or it's not angle X, but it's X is 37 degrees. Now, notice this triangle here. I've got two congruent sides. Notice, remember, the trig is only good for right triangles. So what I need to do is draw in an altitude to create a right triangle. So I'm going to drop down the altitude. And again, remember when it's an isosceles triangle, this altitude is also a perpendicular bisector. So I know from here to here, this will be a 2, and this will be a 2. I'm actually going to add in a variable here. So when I go to name my angle, it makes it easier. I'm going to say that this is going to be point D here. Let me do it in black. So where I drew in that perpendicular bisector, I'm going to say that that is point D. All right, so now I need to find the measure of the three angles. I'm going to go ahead and first find angle C. Once the three angles, so I need to find the measure of angle A, angle B, and angle C. Notice because this is isosceles, Angles B and C are congruent. So once I find one of them, 
the other one is going to be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and look to see what my angles are. So let me just, I'm only going to work with part of this triangle, just this side, just the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw this just the right side so I can see the right triangle. And then here is angle C that I'm looking for. And again, I call this D. All right, so now what I need to do here is label my sides in relation to angle C. This is hypotenuse, this is adjacent. So now I have to figure out which trig ratio uses adjacent and hypotenuse, and that's going to be cosine. So I'm gonna be doing cosine, I'm looking for an angle, so cosine negative one, adjacent over hypotenuse. Once I hit enter, I'm going to get angle C is approximately equal to 66.4 degrees. So that's also angle B. Now, if I'm confident in my answer to find angle A, I can add angle B plus C, 66.4 plus 66.4, and I get 132.8. Subtract that from the three um, angles, what they add up to be, which is 180, 66.4 and I get 47.2. And that's what's left for angle A. Now, the reason why I wanted to put in there angle or point D is I could also do another trig ratio to find this angle up here. So what I could also do is label my sides based off of this, and this would be opposite and hypotenuse so I could also do the sine, and I'm trying to find the measure of angle CAD. So again, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if I do sine negative one, two divided by five, on my calculator I get, let's see, Twenty-three point five seven. So twenty twenty-three point six. And then if I double that, I get forty-seven point one five rounded to the tenths place. Same answer I got that way. So if you wanted to do another trig ratio versus just subtracting it from 180, you could find each one of these sides, which is gonna be 23.6, and then add them together. And that would give you the total for angle A. So you have different options going on here. Okay, so just like we did with the tangent, we're gonna use this special right triangle um, to find the measure for sine and cosine of 45. Now remember, when we learned the special right triangles, we had this as being A, this as being A, and this is A root two. When we did this on Friday with tangent, remember I took away the A's and I just left the numbers. So now let's label our sides based off of the 45. And again, it doesn't matter which one, because remember this one up here is also 45. So over here in relation to this one, this one's opposite, this one's adjacent, and this one's hypotenuse. So when I want to do the sine of 45 degrees, remember it's opposite over hypotenuse, I get one over the square root of two. I must rationalize, so multiply top and bottom by root two. I get root two over two. So the sine of 45 is the square root of two over two. If I do cosine, it's exactly the same thing. 
because remember, opposite and adjacent are both one. So one over root two, rationalize, root two over two, and it's the same answer. So sine and cosine are the same when it's 45. If you use that complementary angle trick, you subtract 90 minus 45, and again, you get the same thing. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the 30, 60, 90. Let's find the sine of 30 and the cosine of 30. So remember, sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's label our sides. So the 1 is opposite to the 30, the 2 is the hypotenuse, and the 3, square root 3, is the adjacent. So sine of 30 is equal to 1 over 2. And cosine of 30 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Now I didn't, I know it doesn't say here, but let's go ahead and also do the sine of 60 and the cosine of 60. This means I got to go back and relabel my picture now. So now the name's based off the 60 degree angle. This is now opposite and this side's now adjacent. So again, sine of 60 uses opposite over hypotenuse. So square root of 3 over 2. And then the cosine of 60 is going to be 1 over 2. Again, notice the relationship. See how these are the same? And these are the same. Okay, so when you're creating an angle of depression, it is going to be the angle that a downward line of sight makes with a horizontal line. So again, here is the horizontal line, and then if it's looking downward at something on the ground. Say you're up here in a building looking out a window, and you're looking at another person standing down here on the street. This is creating an angle of depression. And generally, you get word problems when you're talking about angles of depression and angles of elevation. So let's try one on the next slide. So it says, you are skiing on a mountain with an altitude of 1,200 feet. The angle of depression is 21 degrees. Find the distance x you ski down the mountain to the nearest foot. So most of the time, you're, you may not be given a picture, and you'll have to draw your own picture. Or sometimes they give you a picture, like with that Washington Monument pic, uh, problem in the homework last night, and then you create the triangle yourself. So this is the line of sight looking downward to where you have to ski to, and then this is the horizontal line that it creates the angle of depression. You're gonna go ahead and make a triangle. Here's the right angle. The side that is opposite to the 21 is the 1200, and then the X is what we're looking for, and it's the hypotenuse. Then you have to decide which trig ratio uses opposite and hypotenuse, and that is going to be the sine. So the sine of 21 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Remember when the variables in the denominator were dividing to solve? So we're going to multiply both sides by x to get that x out of the bottom of the fraction. And now I have the sine of 21 times x equals 1,200. Divide both sides by the sine of 21. And x rounded to the nearest foot, I end up getting 3,348.5 rounded to the nearest foot, 3,349 feet to ski to the bottom. And that is it for the 9-5 notes.